This is Twit. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning is a lifelong career training partner for audit, cybersecurity, and information technology professionals, transforming how employers train and professionals learn while following global standards for certification and career development training. See why ACI Learning is trusted and loved worldwide. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit to learn more. AI continues to dominate 2023's tech news landscape. I mean, you certainly you know, heard it a lot on this show and on the network. One thing is clear, generative AI is forcing everyone to rethink things that maybe we took for granted before, things like copyright, ownership, everything in between, right? Uh, one of the more recent examples of this is the AI voice cloning of hip hop artist Drake and other popular artists. The weekend was part of that, that aren't authorized necessarily yet. They still end up with tens of millions of views, tons of listens uh, all over the web. And it's really confusing and interesting to see where this is all heading. So to help make sense of this tangled mess of rights and ownership is Mia Sato from The Verge. And it's great to have you here, Mia. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, I am too. And I've been um, really curious about this particular story. I mean, the the initial kind of breakthrough of the uh, Drake and Weekend story uh, or the song uh, a couple was a couple weeks ago. But this whole idea of AI authorship or AI kind of remixes, taking a voice and cloning it and turning it into something new, it's just it's totally caught my uh, fascination. So. Um, I guess let's start with Heart on My Sleeve, because I feel like uh, AI music has happened prior, and most of the time the results are kind of like head scratching, like, okay, I guess an AI made that. I guess that's interesting, but nothing quite like Heart on My Sleeve, which actually got people really excited. Tell us a little bit about uh, that to start off with. Yeah, yeah. So the song Hard on My Sleeve started circulating a few weeks ago um, on YouTube, TikTok. And it's sort of like, I would describe it as like a mid Drake and the weekend song. Like it's not that good, but yeah. <laughs> it's convincing enough. You know what I mean? I think yeah. I think saying that like it could pass for a Drake song is like kind of insulting, but um it was circulating. It sounds just like Drake. I think the weekend part sounds a little less like him, but it sounds just like Drake. And um people were freaking out about it. It was convince like a convincing impersonation i would say and it had like a bunch of views on tiktok it was on streaming platforms spotify apple music um, it was on youtube and it eventually did get pulled um, from streaming and from youtube and from tiktok but uh it gained a lot of steam and i think that was the first time that listeners were like pretty freaked out about it they were you know it was like oh this is really good like there are a lot of comments that were like this has to be illegal you know so mm -hmm. there was like an automatic understanding that like this tech is new like it's it's gotten to a new place and wider accessibility that is like pretty crazy yeah i don't think any of the examples that have happened prior to this had the had the kind of recipe to do anything other than be a curiosity this of course when you start pulling in you know, the voices of Drake or The Weeknd or or any like big name kind of modern, you know, uh, musician, vocalist, whatever, something that's recognizable instantly. It kind of has the potential and obviously successfully so to take it to this next level. Were people responding to this because they like I have to imagine there's at least a small percentage of people that heard this and they were like, oh, it's a new Drake song, you know, or it's a new Weeknd song. Like they didn't really think about it much beyond the fact that it is AI. But I'm, I'm sure the majority of people that were responding to this were responding to kind of the remarkability of the fact that this was a song that they didn't actually do, but it sounds close enough to take uh, take at face value. Yeah, yeah. And I think that confusion is like a big part of sort of the legal questions that are bubbling up. Um, the weird thing with this was like it. It seemed well, OK, I have my own thoughts about like what heart of my sleeve actually was. I feel like there are a lot of elements that were pretty fishy, like where it came from and 
who was behind it. They haven't really done anything since then. It's like it's kind of strange. Drake didn't post about it, even though the week, the same weekend, he was like complaining about someone putting his voice through yeah. uh, an AI machine and making him rap Ice Spice. So it was like, why aren't you mad about this? Or why aren't you saying that you're mad about it? But um, I think what was freaky was like, oh, this, if you, if someone posted it and was like, this is an unreleased Drake in the weekend, like, um, you know, like a demo, like maybe, you know, maybe. maybe. Yeah. 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 I think, I think a convincing ish enough. And I also, and you know, I don't, I think you and I are on the same page. We're not saying that this is like the most convincing replica of these artists and, and really confusing because it sounded just like, you know, at the top quality, top tier stuff as their, their other material. But I mean, it's close enough to take more seriously than we've heard before. And again, with everything generative AI, where we're at right now is not where we'll be in a year or two. Things will progress. Things will get better. And these systems will improve over that time. You mentioned um, just a few minutes ago that Heart of My Sleep was actually successfully removed for copyright, but barely in the article. You, you <laughs> like it got through <laughs> by the skin of its teeth. It was pulled. Talk a little bit about why it was such a why it possibly could not have been pulled, I guess. Yeah. So one thing that I found really weird about the song was at the beginning, it had a Metro Boomin producer tag. And I thought that was very strange for like a song that was purportedly written by like a ghostwriter. And it, the story was that it was written by an industry ghostwriter who was like sick of not making money. So I was like, why would you put a Metro Boomin tag on there if it wasn't produced by Metro Boomin? And this is mm -hmm. originally, you know, this is an original song. And that is what uh, got it pulled from YouTube. Um, we don't really know why it was pulled from the streaming services it kind of came down like all at once um but it stayed up on youtube for a while and then finally um it was it was taken down and we did some reporting um and we found out that it was the metro boomin tag that was the problem um and so yeah it's it, it, that's why i mean like it just barely right like mm -hmm. barely got that dmca dmca takedown um but it's weird to me that like it wasn't re-uploaded without the tag. That would right. be interesting. Then what happens? Does YouTube pull this? Um, you know, Google is working on its own generative AI product projects. So is this, you know, is this a valid copyright claim that even without the tag, that there's something infringing um, with with these tools? You know, that's a big question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, that I think that's a huge question, right? Um, is, you know, what is, what is said, what is it, what can we say about the likeness of somebody? Like, obviously the weekend or Drake didn't, didn't, uh, sanction this, you know, by singing it, they, they didn't grant it any permission whatsoever, but their voice was used on it is likeness enough to pull someone and say, Hey, you, you're infringing. And if you're infringing, infringing on what exactly is it the tonality right. of the voice is it, <laughs> it's yeah. so confusing to know exactly where this is where this is heading are we moving toward a future where someone's voice whether it's used or replicated might be enough to earn an owner rights uh to a song if they didn't create it it's weird because it's like you can't copyright your voice you can't copyright your style or your flow or the way drake says something like yeah. that's not a copyright problem right and that's why the song yeah. is so deeply weird it's like well there's no work that it was copying um but yeah there are there is some case law about these issues i was um as i was reporting the story i was i learned about a couple cases there was one involving bet midler and she sued ford for um getting the rights to use one of her songs but she didn't want to perform it in the commercial and they hired someone who sounded like bet midler um <gasps> oh. to sing it and she okay. won that case she won that case. Okay, because it that's was like, interesting. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And then there's another just like perfect um, case involving Vanna White um, from Wheel of Fortune. And she sued Samsung for literally using building a robot, dressing it up in a blonde wig and a ball gown and necklaces and jewelry and standing it in front of a game show board that looks like Wheel of Fortune. Um, and she won that case also. It was like, this is part of my identity. Even though you didn't use my name, my face, this robot Vanna White is enough to sort of jog people's memories or identify her as, oh, that's Vanna White in this ad that's supposed to be Vanna White. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that yeah. kind of makes it seem, you know, and, and this, of course, 
that's that's the physical representation, albeit as a robot. Um, this is a robot voice, <laughs> really yeah. at, at its core, you know, so it's very, very similar. There's a lot of similarities between these things. Um, I think what's interesting to me is how, you know, artists will choose to react to this as we go forward. Because, I mean, we've seen this in in the realm of digital photography as well. There are some artists that are like, you know what? We got to stop this because it's stealing our work. It's going to put people out of jobs, blah, 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 blah. And then you've got the other artists that are like, wait a minute, this is just another tool that we can use to make better art. Uh, let's embrace it. You know, it's kind of like the the Napster example where the record industry really wanted to close down, you know, shut down Napster because they were the problem. The problem wasn't Napster. The problem in the, you know, in reality was just that there was a new technology, a new way of experiencing music that was open and you can't put that genie back in the bottle. Um, how are artists responding to this? I would say there's like a range of reactions. I think you see sort of similar reactions as, as you said, visual artists kind of um, worrying about how these models are being trained on their work, what you know elements of their work is visible in this output of the models of the of the tools. Um, but there are also artists, and like I said, Drake was also like mad about this ice spice thing. Um, but there are also artists who have been embracing them for a while. Um, there's uh, an artist named Holly Herndon, and she has, um, I think, like two or three years ago, a while ago, she created a voice model trained on her vocals. And there's a website that you can go to and upload uh, short audio clips and it will spit back a recording of whatever you uploaded sung in her voice. Hmm. Um, not everyone is able to profit off of it. She has sort of um, a whole system for doing that. But it's, you know, she kind of saw, I think, that this technology was rapidly improving and would soon be accessible to all sorts of people. Um, and then the big one I also wrote about this at The Verge was Grimes uh, hmm. tweeted last week, I think, that uh, she would split royalties 50 50 with anyone who was using her voice a voice model trained on her work um and whatever like i think she, the benchmark she said was like if it's viral we will like split profits with you which it's not really clear to me what that means exactly yeah. but she has set up it looks like some sort of system where you can um upload stuff and uh create you know new recordings based on based on this model that she owns um so yeah it's a range of things i think uh, some smaller artists too that I've talked with are like thinking through how these tools can be used for their work. How, you know, could we, um, create demos and use it sort of as a proof of proof of concept for, for big musicians? This is what it would sound like if we had you on this track. So there's a lot of interesting ideas floating around, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No question. And then one, one, um, one question that I have as far as tools are concerned, we're so used to hearing about chat GPT when it comes to written AI. We're used to hearing about, you know, stable diffusion and mid journey and those tools when it comes to visual a generative AI. What are the tools that are being used here for this kind of, I mean, voice cloning is essentially what it is, but um, I feel like these tools get less less light shined on them. It's not quite yeah. as sexy in the technology world, I suppose, or I don't know what it is, but um, do, yeah. are you familiar with those tools? There are a bunch of them. Um, and it seems kind of like they really vary in quality. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, the models will be better than others. Um, I spoke with someone who basically goes on Discord. There are several Discord servers that are all dedicated to people uploading their models that they've made of different artists, different people, and then anyone is free to use them. Um, on an episode of the Verge cast last week, they used uh, this website called Uber Duck and it looks pretty like, you know, clunky, um, but they have a bunch of different models. I think they have a Grimes thing happening right now. And it's just, you know, we'll see how long that stays up. But mm -hmm. there's stuff, you know, there's a bunch of different things. Yeah, of, co oh, of course there are. Um, and then finally, as far as the artists who right now are, you know, uh, putting out these AI generated likenesses of you know, of, of famous, you know, musicians and then racking up tens of millions of views and, and, uh, and streams and everything like that. Is there money actually being generated there? Are the owners of that music actually making money when something like that goes viral on Spotify and it, you know, it has Drake's voice on it? 
Yeah, I don't think I've seen like hard evidence that people are making bank doing this. Um, I did talk to someone who is making AI covers and he also makes his own music. He's also a rapper right. himself and he was able to like translate all the viral attention on his AI covers into his own music and like, you know, his subscribers doubled and people were streaming his music and really liked it, which is like a very funny twist to this, I think. Yeah. Um, and like the the Ghostwriter Heart of My Sleeve song that was up for a few days at least, I think, until before it was pulled. So, and it had, you know, hundreds of thousands of streams. Um, so yeah, I don't know that there's really like evidence that this is like a huge monetary threat so far. Maybe we just haven't seen one of these songs truly break through that like radios are playing it. Um, but I think there is sort of an ecosystem already popping up of like, we're going to teach you how to do this for the low, low price of like, you know, four ninety nine or something. I've seen a couple of things like um, people trying to sell these sorts of classes how to you know here's how to make your own drake drake song so oh, you we'll see believe it yeah you better believe <laughs> yeah. it i'm sure there's, there's i'm sure if you go onto youtube and you do a search how can i create an ai you know yes. drake song i'm sure you're probably going to get hundreds of results at this point someone's making money yeah. out there <laughs> whether they're making yeah. it on the actual songs or how to teach you how to do it someone's making money yeah. well uh mia sato uh really appreciate you taking time and talking about this i find this uh, topic endlessly fascinating and i'm really curious to see kind of how it develops over time. Of course, you wrote uh, an excellent piece for The Verge, so people should check that out. If people want to find you online, where are they going to find you? Blue Sky, Twitter, <laughs> Mastodon? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm on all the platforms, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm on Twitter. I'm on Blue Sky. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Mastodon, though I'm not very active. But yeah, you can find yeah. me all over. <laughs> right on, Mia Sato. Thank you so much, Mia. It's a pleasure. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. 